I guess I'm not so much concerned about why it happened as much as I'm concerned about the result of it happening. And what I mean by that is the same thing that God is saying to the children of Israel in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse number 6. He says in verse number 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and let him return unto the Lord. Let the unrighteous man turn from his wicked thoughts and he will have mercy upon him to our God for he will abundantly pardon. I read a verse like that and I realize that Israel back in their day finds themselves in a very similar situation that we found ourselves on 9-11. They had problems in their country. Some of it was because of the wickedness that they had done and some of it was God trying to get their attention. But there was also the element in Israel where their enemies were getting victory over them. So they were, they, were, they were working with both sides. And what is God's instructions here to heal their land, to bring them back? He says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let me point out first of all in all of this that it is the people's responsibility to seek God. God has already sought us through His Son, Jesus Christ. It is now the people's job to turn and seek God. That's the instructions that Israel was given in a very similar time, in a very similar situation that we find ourselves in here today. So I say to us today that what we need to do is it doesn't matter if it was the wrath of God that day coming down upon our nation or if it was just the result of evil and wicked men who hate us. Whatever it was, now is the time to seek God. Now is the time to be reminded of that day. Now is the time to remember those who were lost that day and think of the God who has been the God of our nation, the God of our country, the God of our prosperity here in America, and seek Him. Notice there's a finality to all of this because He says through His prophet Isaiah, He says, Seek ye the Lord while He may be found. That means there's a time frame in seeking the Lord. You're not given a guaranteed amount of time to seek the Lord. The Bible says that our lives are but a vapor, and no man knoweth what is going to happen tomorrow. And it's up to us to begin to seek God. That means seeking Him, number one, as our Savior. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, who, as we sang about already, died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. But not just our sins as a collective people, but He died on the cross of Calvary for each of our sins as individuals. In the Old Testament, they required the sacrifice of the blood of bulls and goats. And the New Testament tells us that the blood of bulls and goats cannot take away that sin. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can take away that sin. See, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And Jesus Christ died to pay the wages for your sins and for my sins. Believing and trusting in that, knowing that He rose again, on the third day it is the gospel it is the hope of America it is the way we seek God as our Savior but I'm sure looking out at this crowd I see many familiar faces here today and you say Pastor Brandon I, I know I know I have, Christ is my Savior I received Jesus Christ to be my Savior I'm putting my hope in his death burial and resurrection and I'm only trusting in that then I say to you it's time to not only seek him as a Savior but it's time to seek Him as a Lord. What I mean by that is many Christians have made God their Savior. They've made Jesus Christ their Savior, but very few Christians make Jesus Christ their Lord. What's the difference? It means you put God in the driver's seat. I love the bumper sticker that says, God's my co-pilot. I don't want God to be my co-pilot. I want God to be my pilot. By making Jesus Christ our Lord, we put Him in the driver's seat. But there's also a responsibility. Not only do we seek God, but we 
see in this verse we are called upon to let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. There's also a responsibility not only to seek God, but to turn from the sin and unrighteousness that's not only in our land, but also in our homes and in our lives and in our churches. It's time to truly begin to seek God by turning to Him, making Him our Savior, putting our trust in His death, burial, and resurrection if we have never done that. But then it's seriously time for Christians, American Christians particularly, to seriously consider making Jesus Christ our Lord. That means putting Him in charge of our lives. That means allowing Him to make the decisions for us. That means He's in control of everything that we are and everything that we do. But also the responsibility is found here to forsake our wicked ways and turn from our unrighteous thoughts. This is something that not only needs to be done as an individual, but as a nation. These are the ways in which we turn to God. These are the ways in which we will seek God. And notice the promise here. God never tells us to do something without giving us a promise. That's the goodness and the blessing of God. His promise here is, he says, let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. We have a promise in the word of God that tells us that if we do these things, seek the Lord and turn from our unrighteous ways, the promise is that God will then come to seek us. He will pardon us. James says it very simply in, in the New Testament. He says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. The responsibility is first yours to come to God and to seek God and to draw nigh to God. And then he promises after you do that, that he will step closer to you. I have one more song that I'd like to sing with me, or with you, and me, I guess. This is a very special song. It is Nearer My God to Thee. Let me tell you a brief story here. And we'll sing a few verses out of this. On a cool, crisp evening on April 14, 1912, a ship was cutting full steam ahead through the cold waters of the mid-Atlantic. At 11.40, this vessel slammed starboard side into an iceberg. You know this as the Titanic. But what you may not know is as the vessel was sinking to its final resting place, Wallace Hartley, the leader of the Titanic Orchestra, and the rest of its members set up on the deck of the wounded boat and began to play. They played many songs in those early morning hours. They played raid times and waltzes. But one Canadian eyewitness gave testimony that just before the ship went under, he heard the orchestra playing the old hymn, Nearer My God to Thee. He said they played it to the very end. With no thought of themselves, they offered a final moment of peace to those who were being carried away into eternity. Two weeks after the disaster, Wallace Hartley's body was found in the icy waters, still wearing his bandsman uniform and with his music box still strapped to his body. At his funeral, more than 30,000 people came to pay their respects to Wallace Hartley, and the procession was more than a half mile long. As his coffin was being lowered into the earth, an orchestra sat nearby and played once again, Nearer, my God, to thee. Sing one verse with this, if you would, please. Nearer my God to thee. 